What's going on everyone? Justin here with Trading Cards and More back with another video. If you guys missed my last video, we did an SGC reveal. I got a ton of comments on that video. It did pretty good, so I decided to do another video where I'm going to actually be cracking a few of these cards out and sending them off to PSA. I got a lot of negative comments saying not to waste my time, and that just kind of put more fuel in the fire. Before we get into that, I'm going to show you I have some cards for sale right now in the eBay store. I've had some questions asking about that. I'll put a link in the description as well as the comment section. So these are actually the cards that I decided not to crack out and regrade. Um, I was just kind of happy enough with the grades that they got after looking them over a little bit more thoroughly. We got the Hank Aaron. We got the 60 Willie Mays. These are all up for sale in the eBay store as well. McCovey rookie card. Mickey Mantle got a two and a half. The image on this looks great. It's just obviously off-centered. Really nice surface, I thought, anyways. But six and a half on the Clemente. This Hank Aaron got a three due to that kind of crease or blemish right there on the card. Um, but just looking at it, you don't even see that. And it looks probably more like a near mint card, honestly. 57 Hank Aaron got a four. That's for sale. Four and a half on the 68 Maze. Five and a half on the 66 Hank Aaron. This one didn't meet the size requirement with PSA or SGC, but it's a really sharp, nice looking centered card. So I do have that one up for sale as well. And the other cards uh, are not vintage, but we have a couple of bronze and a Maguire. Those are up for sale in the store as well. These are just some of the cards I have for sale, but um, I have many more. Next, this is gonna be an auction block. We're gonna be running it this weekend till next weekend. It's currently December 2023 when I'm filming this video, but we have a Mickey Mantle. This one was a miscut card. Part of this is also an experiment. You know, people are saying these cards are not valuable or they're not sought after or whatever. And I totally disagree with that. But obviously it's one person's opinion versus another. We got a 61 Ernie Banks. It's got a four. This one just didn't qualify for the miscut, but really sharp corners and everything. And it's got a good image on it, in my opinion. This one did get a four miscut. And it's got a little bit of wear on it, but I thought it should have got a higher grade than that especially with the qualifier. We got a Clemente in a four miscut. We got another one in a six miscut. That one's a little sharper than the other one. This Hank Aaron got a five miscut. This Hank Aaron got a six miscut. So you can see I've been pretty solid on getting the miscut grades on these cards. There's a four miscut Ernie Banks and a seven miscut on the 62. I would say I've done quite well in the past with getting the miscut grades and knowing what cards are going to get the qualifier and which ones are not. But, you know, you just never know. But like I said, these are all going for auctions, so they're starting out at a dollar with no reserve. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments section, um, good or bad. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. There were a few cards that I was contemplating uh, cracking them out and sending them to PSA, and I just opted out of that. We're going to see pretty soon how these miscut cards do. Um, are they going to sell for a lot? Are they not? It's time will tell, I guess. But I have done well in the past. A cool story I had of Bill Walton. It was uh, his rookie card, 74 tops. I bought it at the card show for $10, and it was in near mint to mint condition. It was just miscut. Sent it off to PSA, paid $15 to grade it, came back an eight miscut, and I sold it for $114. You can go on eBay and look at the solds on that card and you'll see what I'm talking about. But it was only $25 total invested and I got back over a hundred. So I think that's a pretty good return, but let me know. So my thought process with these ones, uh, this Ernie Banks was obviously miscut. I looked over the surface and everything and could not see any damage to the card. It looked really, really like a clean card. Same with the back. You can see there's not really even any wear on the corners. And you can see part of the other card right there on the back. So it's definitely a miscut card. I looked at the solds. There wasn't even a two and a half, I don't think, in the solds. But based on like NSGC three or two, whatever, I, I valued this probably around 25 bucks maybe if I could get that much off of this card. Now, if I get it graded by PSA and it gets, let's say, a six or a seven with a miscut, I could potentially get, I don't know, 60 70 $80. Who knows? It's, it's kind of a gamble, 
But for me to sell it for 25, I would rather pay the extra $15, get it graded by PSA. And then depending on what the grade comes back, I, I just think I could get potentially more money for it. It's just one of those things that you have to kind of waive your options and take the best option for you, you know. Really sharp looking card. Obviously, I know some people are going to hate the miscut cards and some people are going to like them. It just is what it is. But next we got the Hank Aaron. Now this one only got a one and a half, which I thought was just <laughs> crazy low for this card. I mean, you can just see how sharp the card is. And I couldn't find any surface issues with this card. I mean, I looked it over pretty thoroughly and could not see anything going on with the surface, like creases or anything like that. You can maybe see some edging on the top part of the card on the back. But other than that, I mean, this is a sharp card. And it's not even miscut on the back. You can see all the card on the back. It's just the front of the cards miscut, which you can see part of the next card right there. So that should get a miscut qualifier from PSA. To me, this is pretty much a near mint card, so we will see. I think current value, this is probably maybe, I, maybe I could get 35 bucks for it in this grade, but if I pay another $15, have PSA grade it, and they give it like a seven miscut, I'm hoping to get closer to like 100 for it. There's a potential there for you know an extra $50 or so, but like I said, this is all a gamble, and I'm willing to take that gamble because I think it's a great looking card. But without further ado, we're going to crack these out of the slabs here. I've never actually cracked an SGC slab before. I've cracked a ton of PSA cases in the past. I've cracked a BGS, some other companies as well. Uh, I can't think of off the top of my head, but this shouldn't be too difficult to do. There are some easier ways to do it, I'm sure, but what I usually do is I get myself some cutters. I just got these at Ace Hardware, and I just crack the corner in the top part of it, and then I pry it open with a cutting blade and I can usually pop the card out. <clears throat> okay, that's cut number one. I see some people crack the case and if you crack the case like down the portion of the card, to me that is a way you're going to damage the card. So I'm not willing to take that risk. You can see I'm just cutting the... And obviously you're going to have chunks of plastic going everywhere. Normally I would just do this over like a, a trash can or something because now I'm going to have to pick up pieces of plastic everywhere, but... <sighs> this might be a little bit of an overkill, but the idea is that the sides and the top are going to be able... I'm going to be able to pry into there. So next I'm going to take my cutting blade we're far enough from the card that we shouldn't get in there to damage the card, which is nice. You can see how it's just, it's, you might not be able to see, but it's already prying up on the, oh, perfect, perfect, man, that's nice. Some cases are really tough to get into, but that was actually pretty easy. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So also making sure not to damage it. We pop it open and voila, there's our card. Got the card out, taking a look at it, looks really good. Clean card. I got a sleeve, penny sleeve. I always cut the corner. Uh, the reason I do that is because when I put the card in like that, it doesn't catch the corner of the card. And there we have it. Now we're going to take our BCW SR1, not to be confused with the uh, card saver one, and insert card into right like that. And we're good to go. This puppy is ready to go to PSA. Also, I'm going to be keeping this just for the records so we can show that when that card comes back because it's, it's going to be a number of months before we get that card back from PSA. I'm probably going to be sending these cards in at the end of December. Uh, the last vintage order I did, I think, took close to th four months or so. That's another thing I heard a lot of chatter about in the comments was, oh my God, you're going to send these off and they're going to be gone for so many months and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you guys were around in 2020, 2021, uh, PSA was backed up as well as all the other grading companies. It was taking over a year to get cards back from grading. And if you're running a business that's um, reliant on money to be basically flowing uh, back to you in a matter of weeks or a month or two, you're not really running a very good business in my opinion. Because I was waiting over a year for a lot of orders to come back from PSA. That's just the nature of the game. If you can't handle it, maybe you're in the wrong business, I don't know. 
All right, next we got this Ernie Banks, obviously, two and a half. Got some shards from the other case. So we're gonna crack this out of the case just like we did the other one. I can hear chips of plastic going everywhere. That's gonna be fun. Like I said, normally I do this over like a trash can. It's just a lot easier to have all your debris going into a trash receptacle instead of at, at your walls and on your floor. <laughs> But I live alone, so I don't really care. All right, that was pretty easy. Like I said, these cases seem a little bit easier. And some people use a screwdriver. I just like the cutting blade because it's a little skinnier and it just kind of gets in there easily. Oh, there we go, nice. I just love how it just, you can just hear that crackle. Some a AMSR going on for you guys. Just listen to it. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, that was nice. Same deal, we're gonna lift this card over. Really sharp looking card. So once again, we got our penny sleeve. Is there a little corner cut out there? This one looks even better on the back of the card. I mean, just super sharp looking card. A little bit of a print defect kind of going on there, a little bit there, but not too shabby. Put it into our SR1 here. Awesome. There she is, 2.5. So put your guesses in the comments what you think these are gonna come back. Obviously we're gonna do another video showing all of our vintage stuff that's gonna be going in and I'll be giving it my pre-grades, which I've typically been pretty, pretty dead on in the past. I'm thinking six miscut on this one. I'm thinking seven miscut, so. Just to give you an example, this got a six miscut. It's the exact same card. And you can see how much nicer, you can just see the colors are better on this one, but also you can see the sharpness, how much nicer the corners look. You know, this one's got some little print defects on the team name there. So respectively, then you look at the back. I mean, just look at how, how much nicer that card looks. So you're telling me if this got a six miss cut, this isn't gonna get at bare minimum a six miss cut? if not a seven. And this one's actually more miscut because you look at this one, you can see a little bit of border right here. And this one you can't, and you can also see part of the next card on this one. But just a way nicer looking card. And there's no way that's a, that should have got a, a 1.5 grade. But that just shows you how, how badly they downgraded the card just because of the cut of the card, so. Yeah, pretty cool. And this one, like I said, is going up for auction, so we're gonna see what that one's actually gonna sell for. Other than that, here are some of the other vintage cards that we're going to be sending in. I've got some in the mail that just haven't arrived yet, but I really like this 1958 Hank Aaron. One of my favorite cards, and I picked this up for like $60. I got a steal on that one. Paid up a little more for the 64 Mantle, but that one's going to be going in to the PSA order. Pretty nice looking card. I should get a four. Here's another 67 Aaron we picked up. Here's a 68 Clemente. This one I just got as a joke. Obviously it's a miscut card. You can see it's in pretty rough shape. I picked this up for like $2 and I'm just gonna send it in. Even if it gets a one or a two miscut or whatever, it's still gonna be funny to grade that card. And I've been picking up these 72 Willie Mays cards. I've got four of them. And I've also got a 73 Mays. And I got a 74 Hank Aaron I got for pretty cheap, so. These are just some of the vintage cards we're gonna be sending in with the next vintage order. So make sure you're subscribed and following so you can see how this ends up turning out. Also, like I said, if you wanna check out the auctions or you wanna check out some of my other cards, I'll have a link to my store in the description. As always, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for following along on the journey. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I always like reading your comments, sometimes insightful and sometimes for a good laugh. So thanks for watching. 
and we'll see you in the next one.